of this bustling city, Dr. Alexander Hartigan, a professor of applied mechanics and engineering at Columbia University, immerses himself in his latest calculations. His study, crammed with tools, gears, and half-finished inventions, is a testament to his restless mind. Alex's brilliance and unrelenting curiosity make him a visionary, but his radical ideas often alienate him from his colleagues, who view his ambitions as impractical. One afternoon, as he meticulously works on a complex formula, Alex loses all sense of time, consumed by his thoughts. His close friend and colleague, David Philby, enters the room, noting how Alex always seemed absorbed in his work. He then reminds Alex about his appointment with Emma later that evening, prompting Alex to glance at the clock in sudden realization. He quickly gathers his scattered notes and prepares to leave, as he has something very important to do. As the two walk toward Alex's home, their conversation turns toward his struggles with the university board. Many of his proposals had been rejected, dismissed as too ambitious or detached from practical application. Philby, ever the realist, suggests that Alex temper his ideas to make them more appealing to the university, perhaps focusing on more immediate benefits for humanity. Alex listens but remains resolute, convinced that true progress often requires risk and a willingness to challenge convention. Upon arriving at his home, Alex is greeted warmly by his housekeeper, Mrs. Watchett. She notices his slightly disheveled appearance and insists he change into more formal attire before meeting Emma. Despite his initial protests, Alex allows her to prepare a proper outfit, knowing she has his best interests at heart. Once dressed and presentable, Alex thanks her and leaves for Central Park, his heart filled with anticipation. Emma is already waiting for him when he arrives, looking beautiful as always. As they walk through the park, they talk about Alex's work, his dreams, and their future together. Their conversations often touched on deep matters, but today was different. Alex broaches the topic of his health, sharing his belief that he would find renewed strength and vitality once they were married. He then suddenly proposes to her, and she tearfully says, yes. To seal the moment, Alex reaches into his pocket and produces a small velvet box. Inside is a ring, delicately crafted and set with a gem matching Emma's birthstone. Her reaction is one of pure joy and disbelief, and Alex places the ring on her finger. It's a moment of perfect happiness, one that seems to freeze time itself. But their bliss is tragically short-lived. As the couple continues their stroll, a man emerges from the shadows. He approaches them and demands their valuables. Alex hesitates to comply, but the sight of the man's weapon forces him to act. He surrenders his wallet and watch, trying to defuse the situation. However, when the man's attention turns to the ring, Alex and Emma refuse to give it away. The refusal escalates into a struggle, during which the man fatally shoots Emma. Unfortunately, she ends up passing away in Alex's arms, while the goon manages to run away from there. Just like that, the happiest day in Alex's life has turned into the most tragic one. The story shifts forward by four years, revealing a vastly changed Alexander Hartigan. The once spirited professor, full of revolutionary ideas and endless curiosity, is now consumed by his work, his grief acting as both fuel and chain. His days blur together in a haze of calculations, experiments, and sleepless nights. David Philby and Mrs. Watchett, the only people still regularly in Alex's life, grow increasingly concerned. They see the toll that Emma's death has taken on him. How he has retreated from the world, pouring himself into a mysterious project. On one such visit, David notices heavy curtains drawn across a section of Alex's study, concealing something significant. Intrigued and worried, he presses Alex for answers, but our hero doesn't reveal anything. He instead extends an invitation for David to return in a week's time, promising to reveal the fruits of his labor. The week crawls by, but for Alex, it's an unrelenting race against time. He meticulously checks every gear, every bolt, ensuring his creation is flawless. The night before the planned reveal, Alex pauses, staring at a locket containing Emma's photograph. This project, this machine, is his only hope of redemption, his only chance to undo the worst night of his life. Finally, the day arrives. For the first time in years, Alex cleans himself up, donning a formal suit that hadn't seen daylight since Emma's passing. As David arrives, Alex gestures toward the curtains, slowly pulling them back to reveal a colossal machine. David is both astonished and apprehensive as Alex steps into the machine. Our mad scientist then clutches the locket tightly and gazes at the photograph inside. With deliberate movements, he pulls a lever. The machine comes alive, enveloping him in a shimmering, translucent sphere of light and energy. The room then vibrates with a low hum as the machine begins to move. Alex adjusts another lever, and the camera focuses on a pocket watch he's placed beside him. It's hands spinning counterclockwise, faster and faster. This is not just any machine, it is a time machine. 
an invention Alex has dedicated years to creating, born out of an obsession to rewrite the past. His goal is singular. To return to the day Emma died and save her, no matter the cost. The scene shifts to that fateful evening in Central Park. Alex steps out of the machine, disoriented yet determined. He scans the park, and his heart races as he spots Emma, alive and radiant, just as he remembered. Overcome with emotion, he approaches her, and she also runs toward him. He then takes her hand and leads her away from the park. Soon after, they board a nearby carriage while Alex constantly glances over his shoulder, ensuring they aren't followed. Once in the city, he urges Emma to return home and stay there for the night, explaining that she must trust him, even if it seems strange. His emotions are a whirlwind of love, hope and fear as he leaves her near her residence, promising to meet her later with flowers. As Emma walks toward her home, Alex feels a fleeting sense of accomplishment, but then tragedy strikes. A speeding vehicle careens through the street, striking her before Alex can react. This devastates Alex and he realizes the cruel truth. No matter what he does, Emma's death is unavoidable. The realization would break most men, but Alex refuses to surrender. He convinces himself that the answers he seeks lie in the future. If his present knowledge is insufficient, then surely future advancements in science and technology can provide a solution. Determined, he returns to the time machine and resets the controls, targeting the year 2030. As the machine propels him forward in time, the world around him transforms. Seasons change in rapid succession, buildings rise and fall, the cityscape morphs into a blend of the familiar and the futuristic. Upon arriving in 2030, Alex is greeted by a world brimming with technological marvels. His attention is immediately captured by a massive advertisement for a lunar settlement program, showcasing humanity's ambitious leap beyond Earth. Eager to find answers, Alex heads to the New York Public Library, hoping to uncover advancements in time travel. There, he encounters Vox 114, a highly advanced holographic librarian. The artificial intelligence's sleek design and articulate demeanor fascinate Alex, a glimpse of humanity's intellectual evolution. However, his enthusiasm is short-lived. When he inquires about time travel, Vox 114 delivers disappointing news, there has been no progress in developing such technology. The concept remains as theoretical and elusive as it was in Alex's time. Disheartened but not deterred, Alex recalibrates the machine and sets a new destination, the year 2037. He believes that a few more years might hold the breakthroughs he needs. As he travels, the changes outside the machine become more chaotic. The Earth's surface begins to fracture, and the skies darken ominously. Alex soon discovers the reason for this devastation. The Lunar Settlement Program, once a symbol of hope has gone catastrophically wrong. The Moon's structural integrity has been compromised, and its gravitational pull has wreaked havoc on Earth. The planet is now a shadow of its former self, plagued by earthquakes and tsunamis. Amid the chaos, Alex encounters two evacuation officers who demand he join their group. But Alex refuses to abandon his mission, so struggles against them. During their confrontation, a violent tremor strikes, splitting the ground and releasing rivers of molten lava. In the chaos, Alex is struck on the head by falling debris and collapses into the machine. Unconscious, Alex continues to hurtle forward through time, his machine moving unchecked. When he finally awakens, the world outside has changed dramatically. He halts the machine and steps out, finding himself in a completely unfamiliar landscape. The year is 802,701, and humanity has undergone a radical transformation. The devastating sight makes Alex pass out again. In the next scene, Alex awakens in an unfamiliar bed, his wounds meticulously treated. The room is modest, its walls carved from stone, with sparse furnishings that hint at a rudimentary existence. As Alex gets dressed, a small boy peeks into the room with curiosity. Before Alex can say a word, the child scurries off. Intrigued, Alex follows and steps outside, where he is greeted by a striking sight, a village nestled against towering cliffs. Homes are carved into the rock face, connected by narrow pathways and rope bridges that sway gently in the breeze. The villagers, known as Eloy, gather at a distance and stare at Alex. They speak in hushed tones in a language foreign to him. Soon, one figure steps forward, a woman with a composed yet cautious demeanor. She introduces herself as Mara, the only one among them who can speak his language. Mara seems both intrigued and skeptical as Alex explains that he is a traveler from another time. But she lies to the others, saying he's just a wandering fool. This is to shield him from their suspicions, a move that saves his life. As the sun sets, a deep mournful horn echoes through the cliffs, sending the Eloi into a panic. They abandon their activities, hurrying to secure their homes. Mara then ushers Alex to her dwelling, where her younger brother, Kaelin, 
anxiously waits. From their shelter, Alex notices something that shakes him. The sky is dominated by the broken remains of the moon, its fragments suspended like glowing scars. Mara catches his gaze but offers no explanation at the moment. At dawn, she takes Alex to where his time machine is hidden. He is relieved to find it intact, albeit partially buried and overgrown with vines. As Alex inspects the machine, Mara suggests he use it to return to his time, and take Kaelin with him. Before Alex can question her urgency, the horn from the previous night blares again, louder and more foreboding. Panic erupts as the Eloi scatter, running for the safety of their cliffside homes. Mara grabs Kalin and urges him to flee, while Alex follows closely behind. Soon after, monstrous creatures emerge from the earth. They are Morlocks, grotesque and powerful, with pale leathery skin and piercing predatory eyes. They move with terrifying precision, hunting and capturing Eloi and Nets. The Eloi offer no resistance, their terror tinged with grim acceptance. Alex tries to intervene but is overwhelmed by the Morlock's brute strength. He then helplessly watches as Mara is seized and dragged underground, her screams fading into the chaos. When the attack subsides, Alex demands answers, but the Eloi avoid his questions. Finally, Kaelin reveals that those taken by the Morlocks are never seen again, and it is forbidden to speak of them. Determined to save Mara, Alex convinces Kaelin to lead him to the entrance of the Morlocks' domain. The boy takes Alex to a hidden opening in the cliffs, descending into a dark and eerie cave. The air is damp, the walls slick with moisture, and the faint glow of sunlight filtering through cracks offers little comfort. As they delve deeper, Alex is struck by a sense of familiarity. They emerge into the ruins of the New York Public Library, now a hollow shell of its former grandeur. Amid the rubble, a flicker of light activates, and Alex is startled to see the holographic librarian, Vox 114, still operational after centuries. Alex bombards Vox with questions about the world state. The hologram explains that humanity has diverged into two distinct species, the surface-dwelling Eloi, who live simple, communal lives, and the subterranean Morlocks, who prey on them for survival. This division is the culmination of centuries of environmental collapse, social fragmentation, and genetic drift. Vox then directs Alex to the source of the breathing, a rhythmic mechanical sound that emanates from deep within the Morlocks tunnels. Following the sound, Alex and Callan arrive at a massive, grotesque statue carved into the shape of a demonic face. Its gaping mouth serves as the entrance to the Morlocks world. Alex, who is determined but cautious, tells Callan to stay behind and ventures into the cavernous opening alone. The descent is scary as the oppressive heat and thick air make every step a struggle. Deep underground, Alex discovers a vast, mechanized city teeming with Morlocks. Their civilization is brutal yet highly organized, a stark contrast to the Eloi's simplicity. While exploring, Alex stumbles into a pool of stagnant water and realizes that it is filled with human remains. This distracts him and he is soon captured by the Morlocks. The creatures drag him through their labyrinthine world to the chamber of their leader, a being whose intelligence and composure is highly superior. The leader explains the grim history of their world. When the moon fragmented, chaos ensued, forcing some humans underground. Over generations, these people adapted to the darkness, transforming into the flesh-eating Morlocks. Meanwhile, those who survived on the surface rebuilt their lives, evolving into the Eloi. The Morlocks, unable to return to the surface due to their subterranean adaptations, began preying on the Eloi for sustenance and reproduction. The leader further reveals his unique ability to control the minds of both Eloi and Morlocks, maintaining a twisted balance between the two societies. As Alex listens, the leader divulges that he has read Alex's mind and knows about his time-traveling pursuit to save Emma. Using his powers, the leader forces Alex to hallucinate an alternate reality where Emma survived. In this vision, Alex sees himself living a blissful life with Emma and their child, a scene that overwhelms him with sorrow and longing. Following this, the leader asserts that fate is immutable, shaped by the consequences of human actions. If one attempts to change it, the equilibrium of their world might be disrupted. The leader then brings out the time machine, and commands Alex to return to his own time right away. Our hero seemingly complies and steps into the machine. But as the device powers up, he grabs the leader and pulls him into the sphere. A fierce struggle ensues, with Alex managing to hold the leader outside the protective boundary of the machine. As the machine activates, time accelerates around the leader, causing him to age rapidly and disintegrate into dust. Emerging from the machine in a future even more desolate than before, Alex finds the landscape dominated by the Morlocks' sprawling caves. The grim scene confirms that the world has fully succumbed to their rule. Alex is determined to not let this happen so he returns to the present and infiltrates the Morlock domain to rescue Mara. He frees her from her cage as the Morlocks launch an attack. Thinking quickly, 
Alex jams a gear in the time machine, causing it to malfunction. The resulting temporal distortion creates a massive explosion that destroys the Morlock world entirely. Alex and Mara then escape the collapsing tunnels just in time and get to safety. With the time machine gone, Alex makes the decision to stay with the Eloi. He finds a sense of purpose and peace among them, choosing to build a new life in this strange but hopeful future. In the epilogue, Vox 114 is shown teaching Eloy children about humanity's past, preserving the knowledge of their ancestors. Meanwhile, Alex takes Mara and Kalen to the spot where his laboratory once stood, reflecting on how far he has come. Elsewhere, in his own time, David and Mrs. Watchett enter Alex's abandoned lab. They discuss his mysterious disappearance, and David remarks that wherever Alex is, he must finally be at peace. 